This week on The Digital Coffee, Facebook wants us to run fewer ads. Twitter shows us how we can use conversation controls in our marketing and YouTube launches its version of TikTok. All that and more after this. Good morning, good morning, good morning, and welcome to The Digital Coffee. This is your weekly dose of digital marketing and social media news for small business. My name is Amanda Webb. One of the ways that you can get the best performance from your Facebook advertising is to run multiple versions of your ads. So you would have different versions of your description text, you might have different headlines, might have different versions of your images or videos. And that's really good because what happens is um, Facebook will show different versions of your ads to different people and whichever one gets the best results, it will tend to promote a little bit more. So having a few different versions of your ads within your ad campaign is a good idea. It also helps with the frequency. So if people are seeing your ads more than once, they hopefully, hopefully are seeing different versions of your ads. However, We've been able to run as many ads as we wanted until now. Facebook has decided that it's going to put a limit on the number of ads that we will be able to run. It's going to start in February 2021. So we've got a bit of time to sort ourselves out. And the limit for people who are spending under, get this, $100,000 a month will only be able to run 250 ads concurrently. Now, actually, that sounds like a lot. And when I first read it, I thought, that's a lot of ads. You know, I might run four in an ad set or, you know, if I'm being extravagant, six or seven, but never 250. But then I started to think if I was spending 100,000, I'd probably be running lots of different campaigns with lots of different ads in ad sets. It could quite easily add up to 250. If you have a 100,000 budget, do get in touch. I'd love to work with you. (laughs) So what does this mean? Well, Facebook really want you to run dynamic ads and what dynamic ads are, it would count as one ad. And instead of setting up all your different versions of your ads manually, you add in your different versions of your headline, different versions of your description, the different images and the different videos you want to use. And it will make up whichever version of the ad they think is going to work best with the person that they're showing it to. And they'll use machine learning and it should be more effective. I think the problem I have with dynamic ads, particularly at ad level like that, is I'm not able to see which one of my ads is performing best. I want to trust Facebook to go and do it, but I also want to learn from my advertising and know, is that image working better than that video? Because just for my own future reference. Not happening till February the 21st. I think most of us aren't spending 100,000, so it will affect us, but only if you're making a big chunk of ads already. Now, it's been a little while since Twitter launched the conversation controls. So just to remind you what that is, if you're not a Twitter user, this is interesting. If you haven't used them, I still think it's interesting. I should have said that the other way around. (laughs) But what it means is that when you create a tweet, you can choose who can respond to it. So you can set it up so nobody except yourself can respond to it. That might be nice to make some Twitter threads. You can set it up so only the people you tag in the post can respond to it. You can set it up so only the people you follow respond to it. Or you can just leave it open like usual. Now, when this first launched, I had a few ideas of how I could use this. And then, of course, I didn't do everything. This week, Twitter shared an article with some really good case studies from brands who were using conversation controls. Now, some of them are going to be way too much for us. So I picked out a few that I think are really good ideas that all small businesses could actually implement. Before I show you those, I want to talk about how I don't think you should use it. And it was one of the examples that Twitter gave us. Marks and Spencers put up a video ad and nobody was allowed to respond to it. Not a video ad, just a a video. And nobody was able to respond to it. And of course, this is protecting their brand because people aren't going to go in going, Marks and Spencers is too expensive or whatever it is they don't like about Marks and Spencers. I mean, it's a fairly inoffensive company, right? But they obviously didn't want that coming in. And this kind of goes against the grain of what social media is about in the first place, doesn't it? It's just broadcasting. May as well just be a TV ad. But anyway, 
That's how they'd use it. That's how I wouldn't use it. Some of the other examples are kind of cool. So this one is an interview. And this was one of the things I thought would be really good to do. They're having a chat with someone about uh, Mental Health Awareness Week. They're having an interview, which means it's only a conversation between them and the person they've tagged in the post. It will be a really good thread to watch. And you're not going to get interrupted by other people bursting in on the thread. So I think that's a really smart use of it. For this one as well, they've added a button to their tweet. Now there's various ways you can do this. You can actually add a DM me button, which I know May King was talking to me about recently, which would help you get um, direct messages if people want to start a conversation about buying from you perhaps. So here they've switched off the ability to respond. And what that means is more people are gonna click the button, right? That means more people are gonna actually take the action that they want them to. But it's not like Marks and Spencer's. This is a conversational tool. When you click that button, it's gonna start up a conversation using that hashtag. So it's not a direct response. It's something that's just gonna to contribute to the whole conversation. Love that one. I think that could be used really smartly along with the DM function. Other things that people are doing is, I know this is one we, we wouldn't necessarily do, but I know people get really excited when lots of different brands have a conversation online. It's kind of fun. It always makes kind of the likes of Mashable and TechCrunch. Um, so a, a brand tagged a whole load of other brands and they had a conversation about their favorite One Direction song. Or was it Harry Styles? Harry Styles is in One Direction, right? So I think this could be interesting and inspirational. And I really do think if you use conversation controls smart like this for your business, it could really help you stand out on Twitter. When Facebook first started, it was a tool for universities for, well, they call them colleges in the United States. So if you're watching in the States, colleges, um, it was a tool for colleges. It was a networking tool. Um, so you could join your college Facebook, and you could um, network with other members of your college, your classmates, people in your college. And they rolled it out college by college across the USA. And eventually they launched it to the world. And it is the thing that it is now. Facebook are going back to their roots and they're launching a tool called Campus, which is limited to the university that you attend and you'll be able to network with your classmates through campus on Facebook. It will be part of the main Facebook tool. So it's bringing it back to that original use. And of course now, now when people are doing blended learning, which means some stuff is online, some they go in for, this is gonna be a great way that college students are still going to be able to socialize at least a little bit, probably not to the extent that you'd expect to if you were a student. So this is good, but what's in it for Facebook? Well, I'm imagining most students that are going to the likes of Harvard wouldn't touch Facebook with a barge pole. No, that is for the old people. <laughs> I'm wondering if this tool could bring a whole lot of new blood into Facebook, which is of course what it's gonna to need to do if it's going to survive. It's an interesting one. Thought it was worth a mention because from our point of view, we should be thinking about how we can attract different potential audiences into our businesses too. Is there something we could do that will work for them? I'm not sure this is gonna work for Facebook. I feel that reputation is way too fuddy-duddy already, but it will be interesting to see if I'm right or if I'm wrong. Twitter direct messaging, I think, is on the rise. I think it could soon be a place where we do a lot of our marketing if Twitter is one of your social networks. And we know, we've seen this over the last few months, that Twitter is just adding new tools left, right and centre to make direct messaging a little bit more enticing. And this week, they're testing yet another new feature. It is, dun dun dun, Twitter audio direct messaging. So this is just being tested in Brazil at the moment. And it's an interesting one because I think this could mean that more people will send messages because typing is not easy for everyone. In fact, I find it almost impossible to type on my phone. If I don't respond to a message from you, it's probably because I've only got my phone with me. Audio messages give them more of a chance to be able to respond. 
So it's great from that point of view. It's great from a brand personality point of view because you get to put across a little bit more of your personality. There's only so much that you can infuse into your tweets or into your responses unless you're a very talented copywriter. So it gives you that. But I would put one caveat on this. I'm not enthusiastic about this. We can do it on WhatsApp. We can do it on Messenger. And I find that people tend to send really long audio direct messages, which I don't want to listen to. <laughs> so because they're minutes long, it's like that's that's like I could be doing something in a minute that isn't that. So one caveat is if you decide to use this tool, please be brief with your audio messaging. Please don't go on for longer than you would if you were typing. Answer me this, is YouTube just for watching long form videos? Because I'm wondering, I'm a little bit old now and YouTube to me is where I go and I watch videos, long videos, you know, they could be five, six, 10, 20 minutes long. I'll watch them one after another. That's what YouTube is for. And every time YouTube adds something else, so they've added kind of like you can make like social media style updates. You can do stories. <laughs> I'm not doing any of that and I'm not watching any of that. But I figure some people might be. This week, YouTube are launching <laughs> their version of TikTok. It's like everyone is doing it now. But this is their version of TikTok. It's very similar to Reels on Instagram. It's got a lot of the same features as TikTok. So you'll be able to add multiple clips. You'll be able to add effects. You'll be able to add music. They're launching it not everywhere. They're just launching it in India. And you may remember TikTok is banned in India. It was the first place that TikTok was banned. So it's very smart for them to come into that market. And India has such a huge population. There's definitely room for reels and whatever Facebook's doing whatever Snapchat's doing and YouTube. But my question is, will we watch them? This isn't what I go to YouTube for. I'm thinking of two ways it could work. Firstly, for the big YouTubers, you know, people are fans of these people, not just their YouTube account. So it could be an extra way to enhance what they're doing. So if people are watching their stories. They're probably going to watch their reels as well. It could also work if Lots of people watch them. So if YouTube really push this out, it could be good for smaller businesses like you and me to as a little add on to what we're doing on YouTube. Maybe we're only doing one video a week or one a fortnight, but this way we can share some updates along the way. I don't know, I'm not convinced. There's no doubt that during the pandemic, we have really embraced technology as a way of staying in touch with people. Before the pandemic, I used to set up Zoom calls and nobody knew what it was and I'd have to talk them through it, tell them they had to download something. It was a bit of a pain actually. It was still the best way for me to talk to customers, but it was a pain. And now everyone knows what Zoom is, right? And then we've got other ways that we're communicating with people. I know my niece is using WhatsApp. I mean, I thought WhatsApp was the most square thing ever, but she's 16 and she uses it to talk to her friends and they listen to music together. This is the way we're communicating and we're probably going to communicate this way for a long time. It would be lovely to meet face in face, face to face, but when we can't, this is it. So we've got the lights of house party. Facebook have launched a new feature this week, which is going to make those online networking conversations even better. And that is the ability to watch videos together in Messenger. So you'll be able to choose a Facebook watch video, start it in Messenger. You'll be able to chat to your friends while you watch it, which is great. I think my niece would love that, although she doesn't do Facebook. I mean, Facebook is so boring, but she doesn't use Facebook, but I think she would love this. I think I would love it as well because I love watching movies and it would be like sitting in a room watching films with people. And of course, Facebook own Oculus, which if you're not aware of it, it's a uh, virtual reality headset, which makes you feel like you're sitting in a different space. So integrate that and you'll have a wonderful tool. How can we use this for business? Well, I'm kind of hoping they're going to integrate it into rooms because that would be fabulous, wouldn't it? You could get together with your Facebook group and watch a video together and leave comments and maybe do a Q&A afterwards. I think there's so many use cases for this. And I am glad to see businesses embracing technology. Facebook are going to allow you to split test organic videos. What am I even talking about? So a bit like 
Facebook ads, you could have two or three different versions of your video with different elements changed, show it to a portion of your Facebook audience and whichever one did the best, and you're, you're the one who's going to decide what the best means, you'll distribute to the rest of your audience organically, no money spent. So for example, I have made a guess after looking at my Facebook videos over the years, that actually on Facebook, Facebook thumbnails that like you might have on YouTube don't seem to impact the number of views that you have. In fact, they may impact it negatively. I found that when it just takes a, a mad screenshot from the middle of my video, that tends to get more views. Now that's my hypothesis, but I've not been able to prove it because I can't split test. But now I'd be able to set up the same video have one that had a thumbnail and one that had a screen grab, and I would soon be able to find out which one works best with my audience. Other things I might be able to change would be the headline, the description. I'm not sure what else, but I think this could be fabulous. My one concern is you'd need a really big audience to do this, unless you know Facebook could end up showing each version to two people and then you have to make the decision. But I do think it's great. <laughs>